Welcome to the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Here we have Unit 4, Work and Energy. The section is 4.H, Potential Energy and the Choice of Zero. The scenario, an idea spring of an unstretched length L0 equals to 0 0.25 meters right here, and a spring constant of K equals to 50 newton meter is hung vertically above a level floor as shown in the figure. There should be no mass here. Okay. A one kilogram block is attached to the spring when it is at its natural length release and allowed to freely move. Once it's attached, then it moves. Okay. It's going to come straight down due to the force of gravity. We're going to first label the forces here in part A. That's what it asks for. Notice here. There is a force gravity pulling it down because it is a mass and it exists in the spring mass earth system. Then opposite of it is going to be the force normal, but the force normal is, some, is something here and it is caused by the spring. It is by Hooke's law. It's the restorative force. Notice that these two are the same lengths. Okay. Now here they ask this. Um, how much is the string being stretched in the block in equilibrium? To do that, we set up Newton's second law here. I'm going to do the work uh, right here. Okay, There are two forces here. For re the restorative force um, is going to be plus minus uh, force of gravity is going to be equal to the mass times acceleration. Okay, Force, the summation of force equals mass of the times acceleration but this is zero please understand that okay so this becomes zero so you could bring this to the other side force of the spring equals the force gravity all right i'm just i just wanted to show you the whole deviation for it okay. force of the spring is by hook's law that is kx and force of gravity it is mg Solving for x, x equals to mg divided by k because that's how we get x alone, all right? So the mass here is one kilogram. It, for gravity, we could just use 10 meters per second. And the spring constant here is 10 meters per Newton meter. Do plug that into your calculator, you should get 0 0.2 meter, okay? That is how much this is being displaced by. Okay. Next, you want to calculate the height of the equilibrium position with re, uh, with respect to the floor. So, this is the 0 0.2. They want to know what this is. That's that question mark. Okay. This is the height of the equilibrium position. So, this is the height of equilibrium. Okay. Because this is where you set at zero. All right. So we know that the total, the total here is um, one meter. Okay. Do you see that? That is the total. And we just subtract this part, which is 0 0.25. Then we subtract the additional part, 0 0.2. Once we do that, we get 0 0.55 meters. Okay. All right. Next part. Angelica is tasked with completing the energy chart based on here. When it's released, it looks like this. Once it passes through an equilibrium, it has certain energies. So what is it? Here, let's see. The total is a 100... I'm just going to fill it in here so it looks the same. So here, 175. Okay, so this is what it looks like. All right. Now, we need to know what is it, um, uh, the potential spring. So let's just do that calculation f right now. Okay, so... U.S., this is the spring potential. Okay. One half kx squared. One half k is 50 
and x is 0 0.2 meters. If you do that, you get 1, and the unit for energy is in joules. So once you do that, you get 1 joule. So I'm going to cut this off. All right, it should be 1 joule of spring potential. Then you have 1 joule of also the kinetic. And then the rest should go in the gravitational potential. Okay. If you would like to label this, it should look like 1 joule for the kine uh, kinetic, 1 joule for the spring potential, leaving you with 5.5 joules for the gravitational potential. All right. Now, Dominique says that the height above the ground doesn't matter, only the change in the energy. Okay. So in her calculation, she has two joules of energy. Let's fill that in. Two joules of energy. And that two joules of energy is going to be broken up into its two parts: the one joule in the sprint in there, and one more, which is right here. Okay, it's going to make more sense once I show you the interactive. All right, so the potential energy of the earth was basically two joules in this case now it went to one joule here and one joule here as a result in the chart claim that the zero point of the gravity potential does not affect the behavior of the block earth system okay so look at the change between these two okay is it are these is this the same thing as this okay think about that all right now we are going to do part d but before that i'm going to pull up a interactive for you to look at okay here you have a mass and it's on a spring all right so notice right now it's not moving there is no us no spring potential because there's no displacement from equilibrium there's no kinetic because there's no velocity it's all gravitational potential energy right here. Okay. UG. Watch what happens when I run it. Run. Pause. Okay. So this is roughly at the end. Okay. So this is when it's all stretched to its lowest point. Notice here it has all spring potential. No kinetic. All right. And look at the um, UG here. Okay. In total, it's this mg here. This is the total um, mechanical energy. Notice that the spring potential here and the kinetic energy here is exactly like that. Okay. Now watch what I run. Boop. Okay. I'm trying to pause it right now. This is what happens when it comes back to equilibrium. Right here, when it comes back to equilibrium, notice it has kinetic energy because it's coming back with some velocity it still has spring potential because it's still displaced from equilibrium because the spring equilibrium is on top of up here okay i'm gonna run boop so now notice it is at the spring equilibrium spring equilibrium no potential no kinetic energy okay and it's all that ug part okay so do you see how it oscillates in between those two UG is the positioning of the ground, right? Now I'm going to move the ground closer to the spring. Does that change the UG and K? No, right? Does that affect it? No, I just decreased the total mechanical energy, right? Look at, as I decrease the ground, look at the total, um, the total mechanical energy. It decreases, but look at the change in the spring and the kinetic. The change in these two is unaffected by it. Look at the height of the US. You see, the height of the US is unchanged. What about the K? 
unchanged as well right look nothing is the ug the ground zero is not changing the springs potential energy and the kinetic energy look it's not all right that is the interactive to explain this part okay notice that the k and the us goes to one joule and one joule it's it's unaffected all right i just now put that in words looking at the final chart in each equation the motion of the system remains the same regardless of the zero location of the gravitational potential energy in both cases the final chart the final chart here the final chart here had one joule of kinetic energy and one joule of spring potential energy the value of the kinetic energy and the spring potential energy are unaltered by but the positioning of the gravitational potential okay wherever that u naught is it doesn't affect that in the end it's going to be one joule one joule same thing as in the inner in the act in the interactive right notice right one joule one joule right the ug is not going to change that whatsoever okay there you go hopefully the interactive explains it to you or this explains it to you all right but the location of where you set the equilibrium for the height where the height is zero okay does not affect the spring potential and the springs kinetic energy all right there you go those are all your solutions for for H.